Before we click the check out button, we're given a number of options. We can select a chip, storage, unified memory, keyboard language. And unfortunately for us, and fortunately for Apple, there are no recommendations about which config is best for which user. And if the choice of SSD is actually clear, then unified memory often puts us in a deadlock. Will 8 gigabytes be enough or 16 gigs? And what if I pay extra and buy a Mac with 24 GB of RAM? You are stuck you have no idea how to solve this puzzle? Today we'll put a thick line in this question and find out how much memory you actually need in your MacBook. But first, let's find out what is RAM or unified memory and how it works. I hope it's not a secret that RAM is a type of short-term memory which stores data about all the processes running at the moment. To put it simply, RAM or unified memory in the new Apple laptops is a kind of clipboard between the OS and the processor. And when you open any program, the processor doesn't need to perform the same calculating steps and process gigabytes of data each time. It will be enough to address the RAM and get all the necessary data. So it's quite difficult to describe the process itself, but I'll do my best, just for further understanding. Imagine that while surfing the web, you've opened a huge number of tabs in the browser. And in one moment, your mom called you and you left your computer. Then you come back and see that there are no lags and your computer does not slow down at all. Everything runs smoothly and this happens because the processor simply doesn't need to reprocess each task. The processor stores all the necessary info in its head and remembers what operations have been performed up to that point. This example is pretty rough, but hopefully Hopefully it brings more clarity to how it all works. And now I hope it's clear that the amount of RAM or unified memory in your new Mac is an extremely important aspect which should not be neglected in any way. If you buy a MacBook and its basic config with 8 gigs of unified memory for typing and browsing, one way or another you'll probably have a problem with learning 3D modeling for example because the amount of this short-term memory simply will not be enough. 3D modeling is quite a heavy process. If you buy a laptop with 24 gigabytes of unified memory for surfing the web, you are throwing your money away. It's too overkill. And as long as we're talking about the needed minimum, then for basic tasks, of course, even four gigs will be enough. But luckily, Apple removed such a small memory size a long time ago. Therefore, here comes a simple conclusion. Eight gigs is that minimum, which is more than enough for browsing, watching movies, Zoom calls, and in general for seamless interaction with your laptop. And you'll be able to perform routine tasks with more than enough power on the M2 MacBook Air, for example, or even the previous generation Air with the M1 chip on board. But as soon as you think about more time-consuming processes, the 8 gigs version should be ignored. But why? Even I said in one of my reviews that you can edit videos on the base M2 Air model. I did but it was simply for test purposes. Apple raised the bar so high with the M1 chip that it seemed like you can perform very intensive tasks on the base M2 as well. In real life, you should not be editing with 8 gigs of memory. I mean, coding, video editing, or 3D modeling is still possible, but please take care of your SSD drive. I'm talking about swap memory and the effect it has on your SSD. You can learn more about swap in this video. So the conclusion is simple. Everything you need for office tasks is 8 GB. But what's the difference between 16, 24, 32 gigs? The more the software is aimed at heavy tasks, the more processes are running in the background. Hence, more information needs to be stored in this short-term memory. So the minimum for something heavy is 16? Yes and no. It really depends. The developers of any heavy software usually rolls out a list with the minimum or recommended specs, based on which you can easily decide what hardware is probably suitable for your needs. But as I said before, it's not that simple. Let's take, for example, Adobe. What do they recommend? Photoshop from 16 gigs, Audition for sound from 16 and more, Premiere Pro from 6 GB for working with HD video, and 32 for 4K and more. And it really doesn't mean that you can't run the software with 8 gigs of RAM. You will probably be okay even with the base M1, thanks to the mentioned swap. 
up to a certain point. It's important to understand that opening, for example, Adobe Premiere, it will not use 16 gigs of unified memory until the project itself will not consist of hundreds or even thousands of clips and dozens of video and audio tracks. So you should figure out what kind of professional tasks you're going to perform. If you are editing simple vlogs, it's okay, no problem, because it's usually one or four tracks with some text, probably animated. But if you know that you you need a laptop for editing commercial projects with dozens of tracks, then you need to buy a MacBook with at least 16 or even 32 gigs of unified memory. And it may also depend on the software you use. For example, DaVinci Resolve is way better optimized for the M1 or M2 than Premiere. So before you make a decision, do a little research about your software and read some reviews about how well it works on the Mac you're about to get. Software changes from day to day and the situation may shift in some way. And by the way, we shouldn't forget about other operating systems. Wait, what? Other operating systems? Yes, this may sound ridiculous, but not all people use macOS on their Macs. Some people need Windows and there is nothing wild about that. Before the M1 release, Intel-based Macs had the ability to install Windows directly via bootcamp, but with ARM processors, the situation has changed dramatically. Now you can run Windows on your Mac only through a virtual machine. And keep in mind that you also need more memory, way more memory to run and maintain Windows. So so if an app, which is developed just for Windows, requires 8 to 16 gigs of RAM, then don't forget to add another 6 gigabytes in this case. With the Windows, macOS is running in the background too, so don't forget about that. So based on all this information, if you are a coder who needs Windows software, but at the same time portability and convenience of Apple laptops, then skip the 8 and even 16 gigs. 24 is the minimum. It's expensive, but you know, the full range of features for 1200 bucks? You need features? Apple needs money. And now in 2022, Apple is trying to confuse an average user as much as possible. And it seems simple. Wanna do some office work? Get the base M2. Something more heavy? Get the M1 Pro or even M1 Max and don't sweat it. But then why does the M2 Air have 24 gigabytes of memory, for example? Who would need that much memory on the Air? And what about throttling? You know, these questions should be asked to Apple, but in the meantime, I can give you my recommendations. If you're planning to interact with your computer in a light form, so browsing, documents, making calls, watching movies, consider the M1 Air or the M2 with 8 gigabytes of unified memory. A flawless option for these tasks. If you want to run complex software occasionally, then pay attention also to the SSD. With the M1, you can go with 256 gigabytes. With the M2, you should take at least 512 gigs. Because as you know, the 250 model has just one NAND chip, which affects the speed of the SSD. Again, if you need details, here is a separate video. If you need portability, but you also perform some light graphic tasks like light video editing in Final Cut, for example, or maybe you create music in Logic Pro, then go with M1 or M2, but with 16 gigs of unified memory. When choosing 14 or 16 inch Max, we can forget about the 8 gig model. Thank goodness it doesn't exist. And consider 16 gigs of RAM, but in cases when you don't have to work with intense tasks. Although 16 gigs on 14 and 16 inch Macs will handle almost any task, we need to dive into this topic a bit deeper and realize what kind of processor you need. You probably need the M1 Pro and M1 Max chip for a reason. And you probably need this Mac for 3, 5 or even more years. So my point is, if you need the M1 Pro chip, then future-proof it and get 32 instead of 16. And if you need M1 Max, then go with 64 instead of 32. However, if you're getting the M1 Pro chip simply because they installed it in a better MacBook in general, and you need the display, the speakers, the ports, and you don't need more power, then keep it simple and get the base M1 Pro with 16 gigs of memory. But how many graphic cores do I need? Let's save it for another video. But in the meantime, subscribe if you haven't already, smash the like button if this video was helpful to you, and see you in the next one.